Next, we talk to Joe Topinka, son of the late Judy Barr Topinka, about his new book, Just Judy, a citizen and leader for Illinois, which takes a look at the life of the Illinois politician. This runs about 10 minutes. Joe Topinka, thanks for joining us on the Illinois Channel, and we're here on a very appropriate day to interview you. Uh, it's you know, it's kind of cheesecake day at the Capitol, now passed out by the Comptroller's Office, but it was begun by your mom, first as state treasurer, yes. and then uh, and when she moved over and became Comptroller, she would continue to hand out the cheesecake. So uh, that tradition has uh, been passed on down the line the, that she started, and so, and I'm glad for that, because I'm, I'm, I because I love Eli's cheesecake, and frankly, I love cheesecake as a whole. And um, I can't think of a better way, a better legacy than having cheesecake and bringing people into an office and getting a chance to talk with them. As I was watching Comptroller Mendoza today, it was funny because I could see a little bit of my mother because it was just that outpouring of just, you know, talking to people. Because I'll tell you, you can talk a lot more when you have something good to eat in your tummy. Let me ask you. Um, I, when we do these interviews, and I, I think over the years of people that we've uh, talked to and sadly lost, and who were st what I say are the historical figures of our our time, yes, sir. Um, and to that end, your mom was one. But when we do these interviews, I think of the people that will be watching this ten years from now, fifty years from now, maybe a hundred years from now, that we can capture our history as we live it. Who was Judy Topinka? Uh, I think Judy Topinka was somebody who had a strong sense of what good government should be, a strong sense of civility, in other words, mutual respect for people, being able to work with people and compromise with them to get the job of government done. Somebody who was ethical. I'm not going to say my mother was an angel, but I will tell you on a scale of 1 to 10, she was up there. And that's amazing when you start ta thinking about public officials today in these very trying times when people question others' integrity. And finally, she had a great love of heritage. And when you think about immigrants, she was the grandchild of immigrants. Immigrants make up our country, and she was proud of her heritage. And her love of heritage, her own heritage, made her passionate about other people's heritage. I think that's a, those are critical core elements of being a good citizen, a good Illinoisan, a good member of society. As I recall your mom's career, and a lot of it predated my time in Illinois, but she started off as a House member. I think she moved to the Senate, did she not? She had two terms in the House, and then she had two terms in the Senate. And then she became the state treasurer in, was it, uh, what, 94? Uh, yeah, 94. It would have been the year I went on active duty, interestingly enough. So I do remember 1994, yes. Now, she was, she was a state treasurer for about 12 years, three, three terms, terms, and then she was out for, I think, about four years, and then she was elected comptroller. She, uh, she ran for governor, was the first Republican female nominee, uh, didn't win it. Um, we, we sometimes wish she did, but uh, she came back as comptroller and, um, and then won the second term and then died in office. Yeah, and she had just, as you said, just been reelected yes. as comptroller. It was, it was actually ironic because a couple of days after she passed away, um, the Secretary of State's certificate came in the mail. And so I still have that. But it was just very odd how the system works and, and, and it was kind of sad because there, was, there would have been so much potential for another term. A lot of people badmouth politics and politicians. Your mom was fairly... Um, popular with a lot of people. I remember when she was out of office talking to her and she would say, and people will come to me with their problems and I tell them, I don't have any standing now. I'm not, <laughs> not in office, you know. But what made her the person, the go-to person that, uh, that she was liked on both sides of the aisle, do you think, uh, when we live now in such a contentious political environment? And, and maybe who she was uh, could be a model for people who join the legislature in the future and say there was a time when you're a Republican in her case that you didn't you could get along with people across the aisle. I think I think you need to initially think about why she became a Republican. She I talk about it in the book. She easily could have become a Democrat. She was just in that a geographic area that was very, very Republican at the time. She would tell me over and over again, I, I had to go one way or another, and I could have gone either way. There were both advantages and disadvantages to both parties. And frankly, if she could have picked another party or another alternative, she probably would have, which has become a very popular stance in today's society. But I think, you know, what people could learn from her was, was she was very focused on her constituents. Constituent work was everything to her. And I learned that from her when I went into the military, taking care of soldiers. It's just like constituent work. And it's about 
taking care of the people that hire you and working out for their best interests and sometimes, very often, putting your interests subordinate to theirs. She also had some fun aspects of her personality. Sometimes she would be going around playing the uh, accordion. accordion. Yes, Yes, sir. And the other thing is, uh, which I love going to estate sales and garage sales, and I think your mom did as well, and she would collect things in her house. She once gave a tour to a TV station. Yes, it was nice. pretty chock full of stuff. Yes, and she, uh, she used to call it uh, uh, early reign of terror. <laughs> Uh, because, uh, and, and I have to tell you, uh, since she passed away, there's been, we've had more estate sales than, than we could possibly actually think about doing. Not that, mom was not a hoarder. She, she, her house was a museum. She found, she was a patrician at heart, and she found great things at estate sales throughout Illinois. There were treasures all over the house, and, and everything, she had a story behind it, and everything reflected her love of the state. And so it's not something that it, it, it was. It's something that was was wonderful about her, but was actually very difficult when you have to clean up afterwards. Yeah, there was a lot of sadness that she died. A lot of people didn't ever have a chance to say goodbye. If I mean, it was just. I, a... I didn't have a. I didn't have a chance to say goodbye. I, and I and I kind of talk about it in the book about how that night progressed, not with great detail, but enough details to know that it was not something that I I, I could not believe that it was actually happening in front of my eyes, that I was seeing her disappear. And to this day, I still think, you know, why did it happen? But I, but I think, she had a stroke. I don't mean to yeah, no, drag no, you yes, through yes, over yes, the coals, but I'm not sure that, was it the stroke didn't kill her? I heard that, and I don't know what... The, the stroke was set, the, set up the blood clots. And, um, you know, part of that also was, you know, Smoking, she did smoke, and smoking was not was not good. And we kept telling her that it's not good to do that. So you asked me earlier, what can legislators learn? Stay healthy, exercise is important. Eating right, don't smoke, don't drink too much coffee. Being healthy for your constituents is just as important as doing work for your constituents. Uh, I, I, I smiled as you say, don't drink too much coffee, because I clearly remember every time she was running for governor, she'd be up on the podium with like a to-go cup and a yes. straw of coffee. Yes, yes. She, she, was, uh, uh, she loved her coffee. And so um, there's two things that she just thought the world of, and that was uh, her cheesecake, uh, her coffee, and she also loved her fudge from a, from a store in Riverside, Illinois. She just loved Aunt Diana's fudge. A lot of people don't know that. Did she ever say um, of her accomplishments, were, were there some that stand out that, that she was extremely proud of in particular? Or? When she was a state legislator, the biggest accomplishment she had was um, getting the Ogden Avenue sewer repaired. It was literally falling apart, and that was a main, main thoroughfare in her district. She was very, very proud of that. I think the other things that she was proud of when she was treasurer was, was really the bank at school program that she reinvigorated and the unclaimed assets program. She was very proud of that. But I think of all the things that she was really proud of was the um, um, bright start. She really learned a lot about how hard it is to finance a college education with me. Um, I was lucky that I got an ROTC scholarship. Uh, not everybody is lucky that way, and, and families need a way to, to save money. And I think she really, really was proud of getting that bright start program together, which is still going on to this day. And I think she was really proud of that. I know, and I, I tend to, it took me a while to cop, quit calling her Treasure because it was, it was almost like Treasure was her first name after 12 years. Uh, an interesting statistic uh, that a lot of people may not know, your mom uh, in her first term as Treasurer earned a billion dollars in interest. Did you know that? I know she earned a lot of money in terms of investments, but I also know that she was somewhat upset that as fast as she could invest and make money, it was spent very quickly. Yeah. Uh, and I would also say that she was noted around the Capitol for her frankness. Yes. Uh, you know, she didn't, uh, not that she was rude, but she was honest. I mean, she would, you know, say, say it, call things as she saw them. She could be blunt, and not everybody likes bluntness. Some people don't want to hear it. And um, she wasn't afraid to tell people what she thought they should hear. And she was also not afraid of being told the same thing. Yes, she would be upset, but she was prepared for it. She could dish it out, but she could also take it. She would probably have a lot of fun us being in the bicentennial year of Illinois. I can imagine her going around the state and having any number of different celebrations uh, in any number of towns. Why did you write the book, and uh, now that it's out, what, what was the purpose of writing the book? Um, 
she was concerned about legacy before she died. She said something about legacy. And I wanted to find a way that was befitting to promote her legacy. Writing a book that you put on a coffee table wasn't good enough. And I thought maybe the best way to promote her legacy would be to write a book for young people. There aren't any books that I'm aware of in, in Illinois that complement civics education. And here's an opportunity to use my mother's story as a venue to teach kids not only about good government and basic civics, but also about leadership and, 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 and living and learning as a leader did. So I wrote it because I wanted something for young people to learn off of so that they could grow, much like I did when I was a kid and my mother was kind of like a teacher. It would be nice to think that all politicians are teachers and they teach their constituents, not just sell them a bag of goods, but teach them. We're all teachers for everybody. And parents are teachers. My mother was a teacher to me. Here's an opportunity for her story to teach others. I wrote that book because of that belief. And I'm really happy that the book came out this year because I think it's a, it's a wonderful bicentennial gift. Yeah. And the bicentennial should be, we should be celebrating in the streets uh, for a bicentennial that we've made it this far. And I'm hoping that people might look at the book and say, what a great way to celebrate her life with a year that mom would have loved to have been a part of. Well, uh, she was certainly an uh, unforgettable character over the last 35 years or so in Illinois. It's uh, still widely missed. Uh, as I'm sitting here listening to you, I can remember any number of times when I was covering or just talking to her in the treasurer's office. And uh, there's a lot of people, as I can say, on both sides of the aisles. I'm sure she'd be happy that both of us are here remembering her fondly. I would only I would add this, though, is that, you know, it's it's not what we remember it's what people will remember 10, 15, 20 years from now. What lessons can we learn from people that have come before us? If we don't write these things down and talk about them in writing or in videos like we're doing right now, how do people remember it in the future? Our memories are only as good as our lives, but the way we write things and talk about things for the future, that's really important because I'm hoping that people will talk about my mother maybe next, after the next 100 years. Joe Pinka, thanks for joining us. Thanks, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you.